Welcome back, everybody. The History Guy here. This is the second half of my first look at the game Seven Years' War, which has been out a few years, but it's my first real introduction to the game, and I know it is for many of you as well. Uh, a couple of things up front before I dive into a look at combat today. Um, I, this originally came out of my interest in the upcoming Civil War strategy game, Grand Tactician, uh, which has a similar look and feel to this game, which is why I wanted to explore it a little bit. Uh, and after I did the first look at uh, the tutorial for Seven Years War, uh, I was uh, once again in contact with one of the developers for that upcoming game, Grand Tactician, uh, who, uh, first of all, very graciously provided me with the uh, downloadable content for this game, which I will explore in greater detail uh, in future videos. So I want to give a shout out and a thank you uh, for the generosity in that. Uh, and I want to honor that by giving you a sense of what that looks like here on the channel. Uh, the other thing that he explained to me was that this game uh, was primarily um, developed by one man. And that the Grand Tactician game uh, is going to be more collaborative effort and more people have come on board with that. And there are a number of things that they're going to do a lot better. Um, so just keep that in mind as you watch this, is that while this may have a similar feel to what Grand Tactician will be like, it does not mean it will be the same. Uh, and any of the things that may be viewed upon as um, not great on this game, and I'm not saying there are any, I'm just telling you to keep an open mind about the fact that there are definitely going to be improvements as there would be in any uh, thing that we do and do well and then improve upon. So. Uh, today I decided I would dive into the Battle of Carrion. Uh, I believe that's how it would be pronounced. This was a French fort that to us here in the United States would be to, today better known as Fort Ticonderoga, uh, which is the name that it was given after it was taken by the British about a year after this battle. This is part of the French and Indian War, which was the, um, the part of the Seven Years' War that took place on the North American continent. And this was a battle... Um, in which the French held this fort uh, in upstate New York and the British were attempting to take it. It was the bloodiest battle of the French and Indian War. Um, I don't even think it was close. I think it was by far the bloodiest battle. Uh, and among the casualties on the British side was a General Howe, who actually was a brother to the Admiral and General Howe of Revolutionary War fame. Admiral Howe being the one who commanded the fleet, General Howe being the commander-in-chief of the British forces, uh, at least in the early phases of the um, American Revolutionary War. So their brother was killed at this battle. So you can see pretty one-sided, both in terms of tr troop strength, but also in losses. Uh, and that's because they were assaulting a fort. So uh, we're going to dive into this today. And I'm going to take on the role of the British. And I've really not fought any um, battles on this game, so... Uh, not entirely sure what to expect. I looked at it briefly just to get a sense of what it was like, and uh, I liked what I saw. Uh, but it definitely will have a learning curve. Uh, so I'm expecting this to be a little difficult for me. But I primarily want to do this to kind of give you a sense of what things look like. Now, uh, it looks like it's 5.11 in the morning. Now, we're looking at kind of an overview from way up above here. And I can move with W, A, S, and D on the map, or I can also kind of drag... And then scrolling with my mouse button as I, as I scroll in, I can see my troops a whole lot better. So I'm kind of zooming in here, and now we're getting a look at them. So let's take a look uh, a little bit here. If I click on one of these units, uh, I can see some information about them. We've got the Mohawk Native Regiment, 600 soldiers. You can see that you'll get an information about their total losses. Uh, fallen, wounded, captured. So it's broken down by uh, killed, wounded, and captured, and then total losses. You see some t statistics here about their movability, their range, their accuracy, their ability to re reload their melee um, against melee infantry, I guess is what this is, melee cavalry, melee artillery. Let's click behind here. We've got Massachusetts Light Infantry, 580 soldiers. I guess here we have kind of their experience. Um, so there's a lot of information available on each of these regiments. Now we can look at our hierarchy and look at kind of our order of battle. So we've got the uh, 27th Inniskilling Infantry right there. 
42nd Highlanders, et cetera, et cetera. So we can choose various formations. So if we want to go into a skirmish line, we can do that. And I guess right-clicking, it looks like, is all it takes to get them to have a movement order. Now, if I understand correctly with this game, and I, I see that's kind of bearing out, um, since there's command and control, since you're issuing orders to a subordinate, there is kind of a, a lag between when you issue the orders and when they begin to follow those orders, which makes sense because on a battlefield, that's the way it would be. So we can go into a marching column which I suppose would make us move faster. Let's go ahead and get up here and take a look at the objective because it's kind of far off. And it looks like this is where we're going to run into the troops, but we don't really see much at the moment. So it looks like you can save a view position so that you can go back and look at it later. Let me see what that does here. If I move down here and then I click on that. Okay, that's cool. So if there's an area that you want to be able to move to quickly, that's kind of a nice feature. I like that a lot. So if I want to see these guys here, I can click on it there and then it will always take me back to that. I like that. That's pretty neat. All right, so let's go back to, to our troops, which are kind of far off, and I'm going to Let's see, okay, so Q and E do rotate the map. I like that. So let's see if we can kind of, there's no like highlight button so that you can kind of choose everybody, but you can choose an entire brigade. So you see here, when I zoom out, I like this too. I zoom out, I'm seeing um, these ones that have a, a circle around them or a gold, uh, gold border around them. It's going to give me an entire division. Uh, in this case, I can click on each of these silver ones, and that gives me a brigade. So that's a real nice way. Rather than having to highlight everybody, I can control everybody by um, divisions and, and brigades here. So let's move the whole division at once and just kind of move them up. And there is a, a function where you can hold down the right mouse button and drag. So it looks like it allows me to do that. And again, it's going to take some time for the orders to kind of be followed. And I seem to have lost all my sound. And on this, you see, now you see that one brigade starting to move forward. So let's get this whole division moved out now. Now we've got limbering up, unlimbering. We've got a march column that we can issue for the entire division. And we'll start moving them forward in march column. Uh, you can do a double line, column, single line. So I like all the different formations that are available. That's a nice feature. you got division information here. Uh, let's look over here on this side. We've got this uh, kind of a mini map that you can pull up. You can pull up your overall casualty information for both sides. You can see the situation as far as um, victory points go. Uh, the overall health of your army, I suppose that is. De detailed unit statistics. A lot of great information here. Uh, so I'm really I, I'm excited about a campaign because of course you're developing your own units and everything is kind of um, very much customizable at that point. And so look at the group orders. You can do melee combat, fast march. You can build barricades. Um, we've got battle music, so we can have them start playing battle music. Which I have the music turned off uh, just because you get those uh, copyright hits from time to time. So um, whenever I'm doing videos, I almost always do that. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and get the, the army into position and then we'll take a look at what actual combat looks like. All right, so I'm in uh, to my initial positions that I ordered for my men. And uh, one other cool feature that I want to show you here is that uh, if I click on a unit, for example, it shows me here, this is my regulars on my left flank, um, the regulars on the right flank, these are my light troops under gauge. Uh, and another thing you can do here that's really cool is you can actually give them uh, orders to be taken over by the AI. So you can tell the AI, for example, to take over an individual regiment uh, or an entire uh, brigade or even an entire division. Uh, and, and they will do that for you. And it's just basically allowing them to take the initiative. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and start to get into position for an attack. And as I'm getting closer now, I can start to see the terrain a little better and exactly what it is that I'm up against. So let's go ahead and 
advance the division. And it only goes a little bit of the time, as you can see, so I guess that's probably not going to be the way I want to do this. So we're going to have to issue some more detailed kind of advance orders here. So we'll do that. And now if I issue another set of orders after this, uh, it actually keeps the first orders intact. And basically what it's doing is it's then saying, okay, after you do that, then you do this. So we can kind of do that, and then we can kind of give them a little bit of a left oblique there. So that's kind of cool too. And then it's just a simple matter of hitting cancel orders in order to be able to back those orders up and issue all, all together new orders. So the initial orders that you give aren't superseded by the next set. Uh, they're added too. So now, um, see like for example there, I want to cancel these because I actually want to get them a little further up here. All right, I want to pause for just a second. Okay, so let's go ahead and hit uh, start resuming these uh, this march. And I have a feeling very soon we're going to be coming into contact with the enemy. We'll speed this along a little bit. So the uh, kind of the range, I'm kind of curious to see what the range is on these troops because... Um, obviously at some point soon we're going to hope to be able to fire on these fortifications. I heavily outnumber them. It's something like four or five to one. Uh, so I'm going to advance one division straight at him. I don't know how this is going to work. And I'm going to bring the other division right at uh, his right. So once that division over here is in position, all right, the firing has begun. I've got one unit of artillery down here. So I don't know if they are in range to be able to fire, and, and firing uphill like this may not be the best thing. Oh, no, 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 no. We don't want to advance. So I don't even see the French troops yet, but I want to get this my left side division into position. Come on, guys. Let's get some music going here. And it looks like you can see the effect of the music on nearby units. And I guess each one can only do the music thing once, it looks like. Woo! There's some firing going on. Alright, that division's almost in the position. So it's 11 o'clock. It took us a while to get there. You can see the firings happening from up here. All right. We're going to take this brigade first. They're not quite in range yet. There we go. All right. So they'll head right there. This brigade right alongside them. And then we've got the Indians over here on the right under Thomas Gage. I think that's Thomas Gage. I'm trying to remember his name now. All right. Last, last brigade still not in position over here. But I really feel like I need to get moving. So we're just going to go ahead and give advance orders on these guys. I love the drums kind of issuing the orders. That's really, really cool. Enjoying that a lot. I really feel like I'm in the Seven Years' War. I'm in that time period. So that's pretty cool. All right, so it's going to take a while. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, orders take some time to filter down to the units. They don't just start moving the second you give the order. All right, so here we go. We're moving now. I'll slow time back down. That last, last brigade's still not in position. Let's go ahead and just give them orders to get going here. I want to try and bring them up and behind the fortifications up here on Carry On Heights. All right, now we finally see one of his units. And they're up here, and I assume these are behind fortifications. Oh, there's some artillery coming down. 
Let's see how it's, uh, I've got at least some casualties here. Two so far. That's not bad. Rogers, Rangers. Oh, Mr. Rogers. Nice. I'm assuming that's the same Rogers that we see in the uh, TV show Turn Washington Spies. Oh, boy. There's some artillery flying at me. So 13 total losses in the 46th Regiment of Foot. But we should be able to overwhelm these guys, I would think. I can hear the small arms fire now. Give us some music, boys. And see, this is kind of what I was hoping for now, is that these guys are going to turn to face me, and then we're bringing up the second division on them. But they've just got to get it into position, and they're not quite there yet. Not quite. I need to get them a little further over this way. Sometimes it gets flipped around a little bit. There we go. Now here's the problem. They're going to be marching right into the flank of these guys. So I really need to get these other units moving a little faster. So I'm hitting his flank. Oh, a lot of redcoats dying. These guys have lost 137 men already. Wow. I don't want to advance too far into the face of the, uh, the main resistance here, though. So I just want to take out these two units for now. I've got way more men than him, so, you know, I mean, red casualties aren't a huge issue. I guess if we right click, we're giving orders to attack a particular unit. Wow. Okay, they've lost 196 men now. These guys are wavering, expectedly so. Oh, and there they go. So you can see here's a, a news feed. Uh, Ra Rogers Rangers is routed, retreating in disorder. Uh, 46th and 44th Regiment of Foot in touch with the enemy. Where's my artillery? I ought to be driving these guys off before long, I would think. All right, let's take a look at the casualty situation. So I have inflicted 27 casualties on him so far, compared to 494 on my side. So you can see the fortifications are doing their job for him. Melee, let's do it. All right, meanwhile, what is going on out here? These guys are taking forever to get in position. It's like their orders aren't computing as well for some reason. So I'm sure it's going to take me quite a while to get the feel for combat and how things work. But we, we are having melee combat now, which is kind of what I need to do against these fortifications, I think. I know that wasn't something that happened often. 
But let's see if it's working. He's still at 31. I'm at 653. And historically, the casualties were really one-sided in this battle. But now that we're getting into melee combat, I would think these are going to go up for him. All right, meanwhile, my other division's finally getting into position. Even though we got a few brigades that aren't really doing their thing. The good news here is that I'm making him turn out of his fortifications. Wow, he's still not suffering that many casualties. Uh, now he's playing music. <laughs> he still only lost forty men. My goodness. I'm going to speed things up a little bit. Oh, look at that artillery. Jeez. So I'm going to hold these guys back just because I want to stay out of range of him. At least for the time being. I'm going to go ahead and give Gage initiative and see what that does. He's exposing his flank, but I think he's out of range of these guys. So we'll let Gage do his own thing for now. Same thing with this brigade over here. I'm going to give them initiative and let them do their own thing. Sometimes it makes things a little easier because you don't you don't have to micromanage the entire battlefield. All right, he's starting to lose some troops finally, but he's still, I mean, a long way from being overwhelmed. He's lost 83 now. He's lost just 1%. I've lost 6%. I've lost 1,000 men already. Wow. What do we have to do to finish these guys off out here? All right, you guys can take initiative for now. See, I've got these guys pretty well surrounded. I would think I ought to be able to destroy them here. And I'm sure there's a lot I'm missing as far as how to do combat, and that'll come with time. Uh, if you're watching and you're familiar with this game and you uh, know some things that would be helpful tips, not only for myself, but anybody else who might be watching this, please feel free to use the comment section below and let us know what those things are. Um, i got to figure out how to unlimber these guys. I know there's a command for that. For now, I'm just going to let them do the initiative thing here. We're still trying to take these guys out. All right, overall, now he's lost 5%. So it's, you know, it's that initial trying to get over the hump when you're attacking these fortifications. But eventually we're starting to even things out and I'm getting up and behind his fortifications which helps when I have the numbers that I have still dealing with these guys
All right, he's lost 7% now to my 8%, which obviously are very different amounts, but we're getting the job done. Things are, you can see now things are pretty much even on the map, whereas before it was shifted more in his favor. So things are broken down. I don't have information on his, but I've got the British regulars and then I've got my militia on top of that. Man, it'd be super cool if I could get these guys finished off down here. They're really holding me up. He still only lost 35 men there. There we go. We drove off one of them. Now we need to drive off the other. And the nice thing is now he's retreating right into my field of fire. Now, if we just do the same for these guys. All right, now he's lost 10% of his force. I'm going to go ahead and give this entire division initiative. And I'll just deal with this side over here. Come on, guys. One of my units is actually wavering before his. That's crazy. Send in the Indians. Yes, no. Maybe there's already too many. All right, he's starting to waver now. But so are a lot of my units. There we go. All right, now he's advancing out of his fortifications. All right, let's cancel all the orders that you currently have, sir. Get this whole division going in the right direction. All right. So it looks like uh, a couple of our units are in pretty rough shape, but for the most part, everybody else is doing okay. Overall, we've inflicted 14% casualties now. 1,825 for me, about 700 for him. So... Uh, I've already inflicted more casualties on the French than they historically had in this battle. My numbers are about the same as what they were, I think. I'll have to look at the, the actual numbers again. All right, what's going on here? Got to speed things up again. It takes a while for things to happen. So after this uh, kind of look at combat, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to play a tutorial. I mean, not a tutorial, a campaign. And I'll have to think about who I want to play as, but I'm definitely going to play a campaign on this game. I think that'll be a lot of fun. I'll probably play as the British. So the Indians have gone in and got driven off pretty quickly he still got a good bit of his force now you can actually see the breakdown um, by various types of units so I've inflicted 40% casualties on his artillery 
and you can see who your best uh, regiments are. And you can see the French, not only behind fortifications, but much, much more elite forces, which is accounting, I think, for a lot of the disparity right now in, uh, in the performance. But I just have too many men, and he won't be able to stop me eventually. Might not be the best idea for my artillery to be out front like this. Charge. All right, I don't know what all you guys are doing over here, but let's get you moving. So a lot of these units that I've told to take initiative are not really doing so. So we've got to do this the old fashioned way. Now I can zoom out and get more of a bird's eye view here. And it looks like he's got some units in my rear. Now I'm not exactly sure how that happened. They may have just been units of his that broke. But it's gotten kind of crazy out here. And I don't know how, um, how friendly fire is in this game, if that's an issue or not. All right, he's he's lost twenty percent now. Uh, I've lost fourteen percent. All right, we've driven them off. What a mess. All right. So there's really no rhyme or reason right now. No semblance of a real line of battle at the moment. First Massachusetts militia is actually doing pretty well. But they're going up against a pretty elite unit too. So All right. Updated numbers. 22% on his side. 14% for me. That's good news. All right, we just shattered one of his units back there in the rear. Not quite sure why these guys aren't doing their thing, but let's get them maybe moved up here. All right, the initiative, uh, the victory conditions are moving pretty fast. We're almost to the position where I'm going to have victory. 2,700 casualties for me, uh, 1,200 for him. Percentage-wise, about the same. All right, I guess I got victory. It moved far enough in that direction. So it gives you a score and kind of lets you know how you did, I suppose. Um, but there you have a first look. There's a lot more to figure out about how to do combat, but I wanted to at least give you a sense of what it was like if you're not at all familiar with the game. Once again, a big thank you to the folks who are developing Grand Tactician for allowing me to uh, 
um, just talk a little bit about this and for being so forthcoming with kind of sharing information with me and also with uh, giving me this downloadable content. I appreciate that greatly and I look forward to bringing you a whole lot more from this game down the road. If you'd hit that thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. If you have any questions at all about the game, I will try to answer those for you as best I can as I learn the game for myself. So uh, thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you again next time.